I'd like to start my talk with a little personal story. A couple of years ago, my grandfather suffered from a heart attack, and ever since then, he's had a fear of a reoccurrence. So much so that he immediately quit smoking, and my grandfather was a chain smoker. He would have over two packs of cigarettes a day, and quitting was not even an option. So a few months after his heart attack, he started complaining of a severe chest pain, and he was convinced he was having another heart attack. So we rushed him to the hospital, and the doctors ran some tests, and told my grandmother that there was nothing wrong with him. He was in good shape, but somehow he had psychologically managed to convince himself that there was something wrong with him, and thus, he'd induced pain on his body. When we told my grandfather that, he refused to believe us. He was adamant it was another heart attack, and that he needed treatment. So instead of sending him home, what the doctors did was set him up on an IV containing saline. Do you know what saline is? Yes. It's salt solution. It has no therapeutic value whatsoever. But as the saline started passing through his veins, he started getting better. His symptoms started to subside, and he started to recover. Do you know what the doctors used? I mean, how can a patient who's not even st sick start to recover? What the doctors used was a little phenomena called the placebo effect. For those of you who don't know what the placebo effect is, is it's when the doctor treats you using a dummy pill. It looks exactly like the real medicine, but instead it has sugar or saline. It's basically like giving you candy. But because the patient believes that he's receiving the treatment, he convinces his body into recovery. And you might not know this, but the doctors use this a lot as a means of treatment once they categorize the patient as functional. That is, they have no organ malfunction or problem, but they somehow psychologically convince themselves they're sick, and thus, they start experiencing the symptoms of the disease. My grandfather's chest pains were induced by his fears. His fear of another heart attack, and maybe his hidden fear of death. Fear is debilitating. Fear and the what-ifs that accompany it start to govern us and our actions. What if I can't do this? What if this is too hard for me? What if I embarrass myself? What if I fail? What if this ends like the last time? What if I hurt myself? What if I hurt them? Fear is scary, isn't it? I mean, it's a scary thing. And what we do is we start dictating our future, sorry. We start dictating our future based on our fears. Irrational fears. Fears, they're just a figment of our imagination. But it is these fears that start to dictate our future and start to refrain us from reaching our full potential. We all have fears. Fear of being alone, fear of darkness, Fear of failure, fear of death. My best friend has ornithophobia. She's afraid of birds. Every time one flies by, she freaks out. To have a fear is human nature, but you define yourself as an individual by how you choose to deal with it. Do you control your fears, or do you let your fears control you? Am I going to let my fear of public speaking get in the way of me finishing the speech today? You'll find out. just an organ, I mean a powerful organ, it runs your whole body. But it is, it is your mindset that has the ability to construct and reconstruct your dreams and to implement them. And it is your mindset that has the power to overcome your weaknesses and your fears and to achieve success. Because let's not forget, the placebo effect only works when your mind is convinced that it will. Let me share another interesting story with you related to cancer. I'm sure we have all heard about cancer, right? And we all know it's a deadly disease and it has no cure. In 1957, this new drug called Cribiozin came out. It was believed to be the wonder drug of that time. They finally thought they had the cure to cancer. So this patient in critical condition begged his doctor to be led into the trial. And he's, as he started taking the medicine, he started recovering. Until he figured out that Cribiozin had no therapeutic value. When his doctors noticed that, they gave him another medicine and said, well, this is the modified version. Do you know what happened? 
he started getting better again. Until, pa until papers were published that Kribiozin has no therapeutic value in cancer. The placebo effect is so strong and so powerful that not only has it been used to overcome pa diseases or in patients who have psychologically handicapped their health, but it can overcome deadly diseases like cancer, a disease that is responsible for millions of deaths every year. It is a matter of taking this little phenomena and applying it into your day-to-day -day problems. And I know curing diseases, overcoming your fears, achieving whatever it is that you want, sounds fancy, doesn't it? Sounds amazing. But how do you implement the placebo effect in your life? You dream, you hope, and you commit. Man has moved from the cave to the skies and beyond that. What is it that has induced this change or brought about this change? It is a dream, a thought, a desire, to change what is to what could be. So dream, and dream big, and then have unwavering faith that your dream is your true destiny. And once you know that, then you need to start strategizing and start making your game plan and act upon what you want. Because what good is an ideology if it's not put into action? Lying in bed wishing you were 20 pounds lighter is not going to make a difference until you get up and you do something about it. Because like Paul Valery said, the best way to make your dreams come true is to wake up. So wake up and go after what you want. And life isn't perfect and you might not get what you want immediately in life. Henry Ford, believe it or not, failed five times before he became successful. Thomas Edison failed a thousand times before he got the light bulb right. What these people had was a clear vision and a firm belief in their dreams and a whole lot of patience and perseverance. And like I said before, failure is scary. And it could be the worst thing that happens to you, or it could be the best and the most liberating thing if you choose to learn from it. So don't hesitate, because you're afraid to fail. Rather fail and fail big, but realize that rock bottom could be the firm ground you need to pick yourself up and build your empire. Thank you.